Hey everyone, producer Dave here. Uh, check out our other podcasts. We have The Plex, our flagship show, which is a weekly news roundup. We have Local Love, which is interviews with local Bay Area bands. Uh, speaking of local, we also have Down Ballot, which is our Bay Area local news podcast. And we have How the Tech Are You, which is obviously a tech podcast. Enjoy the show. Right now, I'm going to take a big old dump on the ground, and then I'm going to throw it at you. And it's party time. I'm white, and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee Just like my straight white male dad did to me So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need I've got a pile of broken mirrors And I'm walking under ladders And I'm spilling tons of salt But to me that doesn't matter Cause my skin and my gender and my orientation Are the best things to have if you live in this nation I recommend it highly See a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need all right, hey everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree. We usually start this show at 7 on Wednesdays, but friends wanted to take me out for my birthday, so I happily obliged them. I support this project, obviously, on Twitch with um, bits and subs and stuff, uh, but also patreon.com slash echoplex or eplex.store. Eplex.store is better because if you sign up there, you get discounts on all the cool-ass merch. We dropped a bunch of new merch, by the way, and... Uh, Podcast listeners, you're going to get a taste of what the after show is like this evening. We are um, we usually ignore the chat. We're going to talk to the chat and all that great stuff uh, during the show this evening. Because I don't feel like just sitting here and doing a boring podcast tonight because I just turned 39 again. So happy birthday to me. <laughs> um, I'm producer Dave. You can find me on Grinder. And I'm HK Perrin. You can find me uh, currently not on Mastodon because our Mastodon, our Mastodon server is down. Oh, not uh, great. So I guess here. You can find me in chat as Silfweed. Oh, <laughs> uh-oh. Uh, Jezebel, thanks for subbing with Prime. That's three months. Um, uh, speaking of chat, boom. Silfweed just resubscribed. Uh, people who are listening on the fucking podcast are like, what the shit? I'm like, just go to Twitch, man. You'll figure it out. The <laughs> The VOD might disappear, though, because I, I might DJ later. Oh, shit. It's a scam train. We triggered a fucking scam train already. <laughs> Anyway, we're not here for that. Uh, donate if you want. Don't da- donate if you don't want. Um, I have something I have to show you, HK. I just have to okay. show this to you, and I've been for- forgetting to show it to you during the post game for the other shows. Oh shit, we got a uh, Rizunabe resubbed with Prime. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, I'm fucking not showing right. this to you during the post game because I keep forgetting, and I figure like <laughs> since this is mostly uh, since half of this is visual, it'll be great to put out on Spotify for the podcast listeners, right? <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll greatly enjoy okay. this anyway this is uh klaus schwab's <laughs> greatest hits if you, klaus schwab is the head of the uh, world economic forum and uh the author of the book about the great reset not the one telling you to be afraid of it but the one saying it's going to be good and i have to tell you that the thing you're about to watch is one of the funniest fucking things i've ever seen okay every meal you make every God. bite you take He's sprinkling cockroaches. Every single lunch with a crispy crunch, you will eat that box. One, two, 
three and two says four. Klaus, Schwabi, Schwab and Bill Gates is at the door. Ready to put a patent on air and gas, cause we about to play this set your ass. It's like this and like that and like this and that, so just cheer till the next pandemic. 50 minutes a key. 50 minutes a key, stay close to home. 50 minutes a key. 15 minutes city, or we'll send what is, what is 15 minute city? You better come fly. You better so 15 minute city is like where I used to live in Campbell and people are afraid of it because they think you're, they're going to trap you in my neighborhood in Campbell. I don't understand. Like walkable? HK walkable? So people are afraid oh, of that. city. People are okay. afraid of that. Like 15 minutes away from everything? Is yeah. that what you mean? Yes. Okay. Better implant that microchip now. Santa Claus is running the town. A new world order in music. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. All the unvaccinated are still alive. A little bit of Pfizer in my arm. A little bit of BioNTech does no harm. A little Johnson Johnson does the trick. A little AstraZeneca so you don't get sick. It's booster number five. Let's talk about Rex, baby. Let's talk about Doc Fauci. Let's talk about all the weird and counter side effects, maybe. Let's talk about Rex. Let's talk about Rex a little, little, little. Come and take the seventh shot. The seventh shot is a little luck you get. My, 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 oh! My, 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 you can't die this. Uh, so have to be for for those who can only hear and not see what's going on, there are all these like I'm assuming they're AI generated images, and then they have like the creepiest like I guess it's also AI generated like like lip syncing, but it's like only the face moves, nothing <laughs> else moves. So it's so creepy. With CBDC, you'll have all you need with central currency. We just take your extra wealth and your cash. And you can walk 500 steps, but not a single step. Have more until the curfew activates and robot cops stand at your door. Just a small town boy drinking genetically modified soy. <laughs> this ensures he doesn't procreate. <laughs> Please stop the bleeding. Stop the bleeding. We are almost nine billion people. Please stop bleeding right now. Feed and start a Pfizer. We just made you take it, even if you hate it. Greatest Schwab's <laughs> Volume 15. Now available on Spotify. The best one was booster number five, right? Yep. Oh, but there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Caterpillar tastes like chicken in vine. And mealworm tastes just like a steak. Ain't nothing better than a deep fried butterfly or centipede porter in shake. <laughs> Be sure to check the cricket mag nuggets out. They're almost as I would eat cricket mag nuggets. Yeah, try all this shit. And chew. We already used insects in food dye. Bus sandwich extra loud. Cause this is all you get. I don't care who you are, where you're from, don't care what you want, you will eat the bugs. So did he say something about eating bugs? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the World Economic Forum stuff. You're, this is a very Friday night conspiracy bingo sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. What did he say? They, they're just saying that people might eat bugs. More bugs to get protein one day. People already eat bugs. But they're saying people will eat more... But conspiracy theorists don't know that, HK. <laughs> okay. They're terrified of like the Great Reset, the 15-minute city. 
They they think like they they're like oh we want to do fifteen minute cities and they they're like they're not going to let you leave a fifteen minute radius from your home and it's like no dude it just means you can walk to the doctor shut the fuck up like <laughs> people who live in a city already have that yeah that's that's wild because like bugs are a delicacy in a lot of places and what is shrimp except for a fish bug or a sh- uh, like a fish bug yeah. Like, we already eat things that are so so similar to bugs, we might as well eat bugs. And then, like like you said, bugs are in our products. Like, M&M's used to be made with shellac. Yes, yes, people have already eaten bug products. But we're going to move on now. Um, uh, one, G- one Mr. Jimothy Dore uh, interviewed Alex Jones recently. We're watching that as our main content tonight. Are you ready? Uh, I as I'll ever be. <laughs> uh, Alex yeah. Jones is with us. He's an Austin-based producer, director, writer, and documentary filmmaker, as well as host of the Alex Jones Show, which appears on both syndicated and internet radio. He is also the founder. You know, of you're you're telling Wars, me that this is Jimmy Dore, but enterprise. his movement looks just like that AI-generated movement we just saw. He has been banned by many prominent social media outlets for a range of alleged violations, although his Twitter account was recently restored. Welcome to the show, Alex Jones. Wow, Jimmy, I've been a big fan of you for a long time. And uh, you're one of the only men who spit I've had in my mouth. So I just want to okay. say that uh, I've also had Willie Nelson spit in my mouth. Oh, okay. but I, my mouth was open when you spit at me like a spitting cobra and went right in my <laughs> mouth. So Christ. you and Willie Nelson have both been in my mouth. No, I stand by. What a weird thing to say. Put that Not there. really. Uh, just keep watching. So, But I stand by that you were being <laughs> funny because you were being funny. Uh, you were saying. You go. Know, you said to Jake Uger, "I'm trying to be nice," and uh, that was funny to me. And let me here. Let, let's just show it here. I'll show it what happened. Here it is. No, oh, 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 Jake, relax. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are you, Saudi Arabia? You dumbass. We talk about that all the time. Oh, right, we right. talk about that all the time. Get off the you know what shit. What do you think? The loser people are in charge? No. Is that what you think? And you're pissed. You're pissed. You're you're pissed. Is that what you think? You're the anti-liberal and you're pissed. Bullshit. We're being nice here. You, you know what I care about? I care about, I care about, I care about the American people. Good. You're the one flipping out. Anybody hurt? I'm being nice. I'm not right. Everyone, get the fuck off my stage. Get the fuck off my stage. Jimmy Dore, like okay, back so in 2016, just walked up and spit on Alex Jones and left. And now he's got him on his the, show. The ice tea incident. <laughs> and uh, the ironic thing is that the I thought this was going to blow up into a huge fight, fist fight, because Jenk Uger's was out of his mind. And uh, you had baited him pro- correctly and professionally, and you got exactly. I couldn't believe he. He was handling it that way. He's a brawler. Way. It, and, you know, he <laughs> likes like a brawler. He likes to say he's a brawler. And, but it, it did diffuse almost immediately after that. Like, uh, every, everybody kind of walked away from that. But well, uh, if, you watch, if you watch the full clip, I mean, it was one of the most viral things I ever did. And, and people thought I snuck on your stage, like at your offices. No, it was at the RNC 2016 in Cleveland. And it was a huge uh, parking garage that they'd sealed up with big air conditioners in July. And so we were all milling around. I walked by, said hi to him. I, I've been on the show a few times. He was like yeah, right behind their later. stage, right? I came back by well, he home. was, that was on their stage at uh, the RNC. He just said like, he's, okay. I mean, he's Alex Jones. So I understand that you're like, I don't know if he's even telling the truth about like just the layout of the fucking room. Right. So I went up <laughs> yeah. there and gave him a Bill Clinton's, a, a rapist a t-shirt. And he just completely blew up when he saw Roger Stone walking by and said, Roger, you're not going to crash my show. And so then I thought it was all a joke. And then he got madder and madder and madder and madder. And then he went on air basically and said, we're here in our studio. And he got into the building. And no, he didn't say that. They were at the RNC. Like James Bond snuck in. This guy like Instead, ran, like, like this guy middle. and Roger Stone like started walking onto their stage while they were broadcasting. Like they're like, yeah, like I, at a conference. You get mad. You're like, dude, I'm, get the fuck out of here. I remember this this incident and that is absolutely not what he said right he said like you came on our stage which he did the middle he with, went with up the onto other- their stage like alex would have a fucking meltdown if he was broadcasting from some event and some random person that doesn't like him came up on his stage right yeah 
Absolutely. There's shows 15 feet away, booths everywhere. You guys had a big stage. So that's the truth of that story, and it was a lot of fun. So, <laughs> so oh, no. you can, uh, Jimmy has a, that's not a laugh track. That's just some dumb fuck that is uh, his co host. You, you can, obviously, you didn't sneak into the building because there was security uh, letting everyone in. You had to go through security to get in. And of course, you couldn't sneak in with a camera crew. And we had seen you. I'd seen you walking back and forth uh, earlier. That Other day. than Alex Jones, and no one has ever said that there. he snuck into the building. I didn't know that yeah. somebody had. He was like, they said I snuck into the building. And that's like the only. I invited you onto that stage. I know you had been on Jenk's show before. He had interviewed you at least a couple of times that I saw. So, well, I mean, that's just an uh, invitation on stage any time then. And I well, let me be clear because I don't want to be deceptive. <laughs> Anybody have ever interviewed you? You can just walk into the studio here, actually, and just like come on the show. Building. Everybody else had little booths, right? Hundreds of broadcasters. I walked by and I said, Hey, you want me on? They said, Yeah, come back later. And so the, 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 he wasn't like, Get on the stage. They're like, Yeah, come back later. I was like, Sure. I went and did like 30 minutes of more interviews, was walking back by. He's like, We'll be right back. I thought, Hey, jumped up to troll him a little with the t-shirt so it is true that i did jump up on the stage i wasn't invited but i knew well, there you go break. it was in the middle of the crowd all right so, uh, so that person was at work exactly dude. what jenks said back then yeah, yeah he was at work and he was like taking his earpiece out he's not ready for alex jones to come up and fuck give him a fucking bouquet of rose i don't fucking love jenk and the young turks or whatever but like th- yeah yeah, you just took your headset off after you were broadcasting. Your brain isn't ready to deal with Alex Jones. Yep. Half of it's not what he said, but I certainly didn't, you know, cat burglar into the studio. Okay. <laughs> Very pro wrestling. Okay. But um, uh, Alex Jones couldn't cat burglar into anywhere. That, uh, I went to play he could Austin, hamburglar into Texas. the studio. My first time I was playing Austin and I was I've been looking for it. They deposed Hamburglar Dan at some point during the Alex Jones trials and the knowledge fight really? guys have it and I can't find it. I, I should email them and be like, dude, please. Big house across from the West. Please. And swear to make God. Dan watch it with us. And you were seated right behind me. And I was like, oh my God, Alex Jones is going to kill me. <laughs> because, uh, because you could. You're much bigger than me and you could crush no. me. But hey, uh, I thought it was funny. I, listen, I'm a, I am I love your comedy. I love your show. You're going to get in trouble for this. Okay. But I'm a big fan. So is my wife. We watch almost every episode. Oh, that's of, very which, sweet. Which is a lot. Uh, and so, no, I think you're one of the best uh, political brains out there. And you're fair. You're exposing the oh, whole. Oh, Alex Jones is going on there kissing this guy's ass so that this guy gives him an even more softball interview. Because you know what Jimmy likes is getting his ass kissed brought and controlled by big corporations like BlackRock, who are now starting World War III, and you've really the whole time stood up for my free speech, and I appreciate that. You got it a little wrong what happened with the whole school shooting thing and what I really said and what I did. Oh, this will be fun. Okay. Uh, so I, don't I also love that. that Jimmy's show, The Mouse Pointer, is just on his show. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jimmy. But if, but if that comes up, I can... Tell you what really happened there. That was all PR firms. They're like ready to close his window. Blowing it up years later as a way to try to take me off the air. Okay, so yeah, why well, do I? So wait, if the mouse that, cursor is this. on his screen, then he's broadcasting a screen capture. I mean, there's ways in like you can have. I don't know what software he's using. I just know that there's a mouse cursor on the screen here. You were on with yeah, the, but like that's Carlson. his camera. Like that's the camera that's pointed at him. Well, the background. I don't HK. I don't know exactly how it came to be, but there's a mouse pointer here, right? <laughs> and then he said this: When you got deplatformed, and it, to this day, no one has ever been more aggressively censored. I don't think than you. Um, I've apologized to you this in person before. I was in Labrador. And yeah, definitely no one's ever been more aggressively censored than the guy who has a show online that is followed by millions of people and is definitely not in jail and definitely not dead. Anybody whose sitcom gets canceled has been more canceled than Alex Jones. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chattelak. American media. I don't think anybody defended you. When that happened, anybody with any kind of audience for me when Tim Cook. Had- so I just want to I want to correct the record on that. And uh, I actually did defend you the day it happened. And ever since, I swear I to God, man, uh, conservatives the are studio. the most fragile people in the entire world. There are such fragile little snowflakes like someone could be like, I don't like your show. And they'd be like, why are you trying to cancel me? 
they would flip out about being being censored and canceled. So in this this thing we're watching, which is a, 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 a taking turns kissing each other's ass, Alex was on Tucker and said, oh, nobody defended me. And Jimmy's like, oh, yeah, I defended you. And I couldn't believe that they did this to you and that uh, everybody. At Why the didn't o- you mention me on Tucker, Alex? Turks was going along with it. They're supposed to be an independent news show. Of course, now we know they're not. They're corporate funded. And so here, watch this. Why are we so afraid that human beings can't decipher for themselves what to believe and what not to? This isn't the first time there's been alternative. Jimmy in that clip because looks like there's a human beings can't do that. And what? This, Jimmy in this clip looks like there's a bright light pointed right at his face too. Look, the establishment. You get to do like, that. That's America. what school is for. What? <laughs> we don't have the natural ability to you do to it. Say, yeah. You know. uh I remember uh, the biggest fake news story of the Washington Post published was that uh, Saddam has weapons of mass destruction. That wasn't just some jag off in the Washington Post. That was their editorial board. Yeah, but there was no Twitter to kick them off at that time for misinformation, Jimothy. Saying that. So, again, so this that this is not a slippery slope. We're already we've already slipped. Once you ban anybody, you're there. Right. They've already suppressed us. They're doing that right now. And now they're just going to go to full out banning. So are you that- struck that Apple took down all of his content? Mm-hmm. I am struck that that's pretty like. So all along, they were OK all this time. He has what? Two, over two million subscribers or two point five on YouTube. That's crazy. So all of a sudden that they just go, we're done. Yes. I, you know, I think it's the worst thing that could happen, you know, especially with the advent that we don't have, you know, a freedom on the Internet, that it's all going to be controlled and they're taking our voices away. And they're really taking away access to unify people through ideas, through information. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, a, a beacon of be unity that Alex wars. Jones. We can be lied to about that we torture. But um all of those, you know, those uh, those presses, they, they they can thrive and continue to take ad revenue and commercialize. All of those presses can t- continue to thrive and take ad oh, revenue. No doubt about it. The way to debunk Alex Jones isn't to, to suppress his speech. That makes him a martyr. It actually lifts him up and makes more people interested in what he has to say. And then his all his accusations of the establishment suppressing him ring true because it actually is happening. This, I mean, clearly it doesn't him. like deplatforming For- cost him most of his audience and revenue yeah it works it works yeah. the the streisand effect isn't like what they think it is right this they, they they're like trying to compare it to the streisand effect but the streisand effect is only really applicable for a single incident and a single piece of content that somebody doesn't want seen because it embarrasses them removing somebody from the like youtube and twitter and facebook and instagram and you know apple podcast probably spotify and stuff that's not re- that's not trying to remove a single piece of content you're they're they're in, very hard to reach now very hard to be found by the normies and it may have a yep. it may have a um an effect of like hardening like the inner core of the audience in a way do you know what i'm saying but it doesn't yeah. have the effect of growing the audience no it very much has the effect of shrinking the audience for bad speech in a free open society is not suppression of that speech. The antidote to bad speech in a free and open society is more speech. You don't all of a sudden start saying, well, I have a secret group of billionaire uh, Silicon Valley billionaires and they're going to decide what's actually free speech and what's not. They're going to protect us. I don't need them to protect us. So I don't need some yet again, uh, I feel like it, We need to explain that uh, freedom of speech, that term, you know, the First Amendment, applies only to the government. It does not apply to the newspaper's editorial section. Uh, It does not apply to Twitter. It does not apply to Facebook. It does not apply to NBC's news shows. it only applies to the government. The government can't put you in jail for criticizing the government. And we can have a conversation about how dumb and fucked up content moderation is without acting like we've been de- denied our First Amendment rights. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Yep. Because then you look silly, and maybe, uh, again, the normies may take you less seriously. 
And if you if if you do get kicked off or removed from a platform like uh, Conspiracy Bingo got us uh, banned from live streaming on YouTube, and um, instead of telling them that uh, they were violating my First Amendment rights, I was like, hey, you know, you guys uh, publish a lot of the misinformation that we cover on Conspiracy Bingo, so I think it's kind of dumb that you would uh, sanction me for making fun of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the person at the other end eventually like they fucking fixed it and i like got a hold of a real person because i like didn't like act like i was like freedom just like hey what you're doing here is kind of <laughs> seems kind of dumb guys we've been around and yeah. around about this can we can we do something about this and it actually worked this time anyway it's it's my birthday and i have a pretty fancy bottle of vodka and some tonic so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go combine those in a glass while you watch this garbage I don't need the government to protect me from harmful speech. I don't need a billionaire in Silicon Valley to protect me from harmful speech. I've been exposed to harmful speech my entire goddamn life. Nobody, so what do you? So what else are you going to start banning? What is fake news? Because I'll tell you, the biggest fake news story of my lifetime was Iraq possessions possesses weapons of mass destruction. That was the biggest fake news propaganda story in the history of my life. Should the Washington Post be deplatformed then because they posted fake news? Do you know we just did a start we just did a story a few weeks ago on the Jimmy Dort show. If they Facebook knew it was fake news, then yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent Facebook page because the newspaper for the fourth of July posted the Declaration of Independence. And they took it down because of hate speech inside the Declaration of Independence. That's a fact that happened. And they had only posted the first half of the Declaration of Independence. And their Facebook uh, page no, had a strike. If I recall, they bid, didn't take it and down. They were afraid to uh, post the second They half being the platform. Again. Uh, the people who were posting it took so it down the because we're they were right being the bombarded with like messages saying, like, how speech. dare you you post this speech is from like right wingers who didn't realize that it was so the de Declaration of Independence. Know that I'm well, also, it got caught. The thing he's talking about got caught by the... I already know what he's talking about. It got caught by the Facebook algorithm because some of the things it was saying about natives calling them savages. And then... Mm. Uh, okay. Because it got caught, like, Automod caught it, right? And then Facebook was like, well, this is the Declaration of, Declaration of Independence. You're posting it. We're going to put it back up because it's a historical document. It was down for, like, a day. Okay. So it was auto-moderated. Yeah. I'm sure Tucker didn't know, but I did defend you, and I defended the I defended free speech and the First Amendment, and to the point where I got into screaming. No, he didn't. He he defended platforming idiots. And I couldn't. That's not the same spe th were, same thing as free speech and the First Amendment. So, was their take that was like no? It, it's their take good. was that you all well, you can't post. Jimmy's just doing the biggest pick me right here. Just oh shit. <laughs> Yep. Cadillac gifted the Satanic Panic Pink Altar pint glass to the chat. That's a very good piece of gift to the chat. It's a pint glass for your... Make sure you don't fucking dishwasher that shit if you win it. Bang enter in the chat to win that. Um, yeah, bang enter in the chat if you want that. Make sure you don't dishwasher it because then it'll just be a pint glass <laughs> instead of a uh, logo pint glass. I learned that with one of my pint glasses. I think I did that right. My lights are fucking haunted. Tildy tab so is that be able to, And I'm like, that is not what's going on here. And well, by the way, Jimmy, if I can respond to that, yeah, that's a great point. You notice I didn't. We didn't talk before this interview. No, this is unscripted. I I, I remembered, so I didn't even know you were going to play that clip. I didn't know out of the gates. That's the first thing I brought up was I, I appreciate that you were one of the few people up front that saw what was happening. They were exaggerating what I said out of context, demonizing me. So that everybody else would accept. Yo, it's your birthday. I'm going to get some of the champagne that's left over from New Year's. Hell yeah. It's New Year's part Cheers two. Cheers to you. I have to get everybody else taken off air. And it later came out in government documents in the Wall Street Journal that indeed they chose me as a colorful, flamboyant person to get the public to accept that as basically training wheels uh, to get everybody on board. But, but you hit the nail on the head. I've never killed anybody. Madeleine Albright tripled the sanctions on Iraq as if it wasn't bad enough what George Herbert Walker Bush did and killed several million people. She was in the middle of office as Secretary of State. Well, she, then I guess they should kick her off of Twitter. <laughs> Leslie Stahl. A million people kick Madeleine people. Albright off of YouTube. Fucking monster. Is that a good price to pay for what you did? She said, yeah, it's a good price to pay. We're proud of it. You know, basically we do it again. 
Okay, she's lauded and worshipped. And, and then they knew they were lying about WMDs. And, and you get Colin Powell up there with the anthrax and all of that garbage they knew wasn't true. And so they've killed millions of people. But then I am set up in civilization and society as the worst person who's ever existed because I agree with a couple callers calling in once saying, yeah, probably is fake. And they literally cobble that together, have a PR firm. He's like, try oh, hold on. This thing about the PR firm is amazing. Is fake. And they literally cobble that together, have a PR firm. I wasn't platform for that. They, they needed something afterwards because it made me a martyr, what you predicted. So they dredged up this earlier stuff, exaggerated it times 100, then defaulted me in court cases when I gave them all the stuff. There was no case. The judges found me guilty and then told juries that I was worth $400 million when I was actually broken upside down last year. And now it's finally come out in court and my bankruptcy that I was upside down when the judge says, you're not broke, you're a liar, and your lawyers can't put on any evidence. We're going to have a financial expert who hadn't even reviewed my documents. Ooh, having a lot of Babylon won that fucking pint on glass. Hell yeah. and tell the jury I'm worth $400 million. I mean, th and now Trump has a judge over his trial, his civil trial in New York. This Happy is what birthday, Dave. Doing. And Thank if, you. Even if you hate Alex Jones Cheers. or hate the distilled clips people have seen, you know, that's really a straw man, fine. I'm the devil. We, when you take my speech, just like old fashioned liberals were smart, they said, let the idiot KKK march. We hate them. They're horrible. But if we take these scumbags' rights. Yeah, real quick. Isn't that what, what they said? So the thing that you missed while you were up getting a glass of champagne is everything he was saying about his trial, R.E. Sandy Hook, is not true. Like he just came, okay. he just is trying, he's trying to like retcon the whole thing about Sandy Hook and the lawsuit right here. He's been going around trying to do this for quite some time now. Everybody else's is gone and our rights are too valuable. So Jimmy, you're an old fashioned liberal. And I would say... Tucker Carlson's an old-fashioned liberal. I know Wait, him what? well. We're friends. We go hunting. You know, I've, known, I've known him well for 10 years. You're around Tucker. He is a real old-fashioned liberal. He's anti-war. He's pro-free He's pro free speech. He's for populist. He's against the big corporations. He's for monopoly busting, just like you. And that's why I got arrested for protesting George W. Bush. I was against those wars. I was against the Patriot Act. I don't even really call myself a conservative. I'm a populist, pro-human American, and that's why they feared me and misrepresented what I actually said and what I did. How do you and feel so about the, the gays, though? Mm, that's a good question. He's pro-human, but very anti-gay, especially if you're a frog. I mean, it just depends who you think are human, then, HK. We, we've, been, we've run across this before. Uh, Av, looks like Av of Bab uh, was able to redeem that glass. Make sure you send us a picture of it. This Thanks. is amazing, because... Fucking Jimmy Dore used to have a segment on his show, like when he had funny people that were writing for the Jimmy Dore show, like he had Frank Connick from uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000. He had like Rip Torn on his, sh Rip Torn, I think is his name on his show. And he had somebody that called in and did like impressions of people and like left fake messages. And one of them was Alex Jones and they were making so much fun of Alex Jones. And now here he is, pick meing Alex Jones. This is really sad representation of what they of, uh, of your position but, you know this is part of the right wing grift shift so bad. part of the right wing grift shift is like apologizing to everyone that you used to make fun of yeah drake they did, they, they, is, they, did a, they did a drake they did a segment on a show called rip torn's hollywood drunk tank it was pretty funny the show used to be pretty fucking good actually because he had like good writers and funny like hollywood people out of comedy and like like tv and stuff like not like super big celebrities but funny like talented people and then he lost the plot during the election of 2016 when i was able to co-host a show for two and a half hours a couple weeks he didn't ago, lose he the plot he saw all the dollar signs at the end of the right wing grift shift so and misrepresented what i actually said and what i did and so tell me the misrepresentation of what they of, uh, of your positions that got you banned. Yes. Tell me what go back through and lie to me about what you were saying about Sandy Hook and other things that got you kicked <laughs> off. Just lie to me some more, Alex. Lie to me. Lie to my audience. When I was able to co-host a show for two and a half hours a couple weeks ago with Elon Musk on Spaces that just the main show had 20 million views over 100 million what is views Spaces. Spaces on it's uh remember Clubhouse? No. Um, do you know Discord voice chat room? Yeah. 
that space is on Twitter. But you can only connect to oh, it on okay. your phone. It's a Twitter thing. You can only connect to it on your phone. Really? Yeah, it's garbage. Um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, the, 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 the Elon's ever done. I, I, I hear we're going to do another one soon. <laughs> he he was told by Tucker privately and others, hey, Alex was not deplatformed for Sandy Hook. He thought that. And he said on the air, he goes, no, I went to the log and I noticed it was for confronting Oliver Darcy, who had been taking my sponsors and getting me kicked off things and bragging about it. So I saw him in D.C. going in a committee hearing that they were talking about me at later. And I confronted him and said, man, you're an anti-American person. Well, they called that bullying, and that was the final strike. Yes, you're off pl- as a public figure, your off-platform uh, behavior is grounds for their your removal under their terms of service. Yes. And he didn't just go up and be like, oh, sir, you're anti-American, and then pull out his pocket watch. Like, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he wasn't like, hip, hip, cheerio, good sir. <laughs> I don't know the incident in question, but he was probably freaking out on the fucking guy, right? Most likely, yeah. So the last place he was allowed was on Twitter and um and uh, Periscope for a little bit, but then like at a hearing, he was Alex was in uh, uh, Washington D.C. and then uh, Jack Dorsey on the way into a hearing, Alex just started fucking freaking out on him, and then had him know somehow the next day he got kicked off Twitter and Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he, you know, it's because some of these people do have egos, just like Alex. Uh, that took me off of uh, Twitter at the time. And so then no, it was because you fucking started screaming at Jack Dorsey while he was walking into a hearing to lie to Congress. You dumb fuck bigger for a while. And so we, they now bragged about it. Once they won these court cases by rigging him, <laughs> a PR firm put out press releases. Um, when they won the Connecticut case, the second, they one won again, these court November cases by rigging. Them. Listen to these what he are says. The court cases about Sandy hook. Yes. The, um, the ones where, he admitted that the lawyer had a uh, Perry Mason moment where the lawyer just had access to all of his phone and could point to where he was lying. Uh, yes, but check out. Okay. The, so this they, part, they this, rigged that. I'm, I don't want to relitigate the uh, Alex Jones uh, trial, although he's trying to do it. But check out what happens <laughs> here. I've heard some okay. of this. And so we, they now bragged about it once they won these court cases by rigging him. A PR firm put out press releases um, when they won the Connecticut case, the second one in uh, November of last year, 2022, about to be two years ago or you know, two years back. And I didn't know what happened until later. So, yeah, Sandy Hook happens. It's real. I think it happened. It's a terrible tragedy. School shootings you know, are, are, are real. A bunch of academics and people start looking at anomalies. It becomes this huge Internet thing, hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. Other people. Covering it, the professors in Florida and Wisconsin and a school safety guy and a bunch of people. And it turned out some of the things they said were true. Some weren't. Turns out a couple of them are probably schizophrenic. And I simply covered it on a few shows, um, had callers call. Oh, that's all. That's simply all he did. Yeah. Again, like, no, he was like the fucking Sandy Hook network for a very long time. He's they show. Well, he was saying that's not this. what he's saying now. He was like saying this stuff. We watched the deposition on the channel a long time ago, and he was trying to say this stuff. And they're like, uh, "We have, I have hundreds of clips here." So <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is all public, man. You actually put this out on the internet for everyone to see. Like you can't lie about it because we have the video. <laughs> then he tried to be like, "Oh, you don't have that stuff." My channel, my YouTube channel, was taken down. <laughs> and it was like, dude, what the fuck? These are this is discovery. They just subpoenaed YouTube for your old videos. You stupid fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's not like YouTube just deletes those videos. <laughs> they all put it in the trash. <laughs> they just take the Alex Jones folder. Oh, this is one of those Alex Jones hard drives. We can just toss that away. This was 22 minutes uh, over six years. It was six years after it, seven years after it, they sued me. I hadn't talked about it when they sued me for over two years. Barely ever talked about it, but they cherry picked it. The PR firm put the clips out ran it right right as I was being deplat right after I was deplatformed in 2018. Suddenly it's like they were invading a country. The propaganda was in sometimes every newspaper, almost every day, mm-hmm. Nightline, or oh, that's already gone, PBS, CNN, every show. Uh Ted Koppel did chime in on other shows, but it wasn't Nightline. Dan Rather, uh all Dan of Dan Rather was retired. Out. He's just he's just pulling up names of people he thinks are he's like fucking Oh, I'm trying to think now. Uh, like who's John an old Newsman? 
old timey like Brian Williams. It was on Oprah. It was on the Hullabaloo against me i mean old guard they had 60 minute shows about it they had nbc dateline shows about it and they said he's currently going to their houses he's currently sending people to their houses he's currently urinating on graves none of that ever was put in court no one ever did where's henry kissinger anyways. buried by the way and so then they sue me for years to get all these depositions we give them all the discovery there's nothing there and they go you didn't give us everything you're defaulted so now we're going to have a trial on. He actually gave them more than he was supposed to, <laughs> but well, more total, I guess, but not some of the stuff they were looking for. I guess this was, uh, so he, I think he's talking about the first time where he refused I, to comply with discovery. Yeah. Didn't give them anything. Or, and then they just default judgment. At him. Yeah. He's conflating two, just like, okay, two, well, well, I think you're conflating two different matters in your head too. Cause after that didn't work, then they, they fucked up and gave him somehow gave him the complete contents of the guy's phone. Uh, Bobolino yeah. <laughs> 310, thanks for following. Yeah, Walter Cronkite covered Alex Jones covering Sandy Hook. <laughs> it was also on an episode of Get Smart. The judges in both places wouldn't let us, they had my phone because we gave them the phones. When they go, oh, we hacked, he, he they actually gave us his phone. I remember when FDR made a we presidential address about it. My phones. The, the real reason the lawyers got sanctioned is with the phones, they accidentally just gave them all raw, and they gave them some of the Sandy Hook medical records from those depositions. So the lawyers did mess up, but they already had the phone. So I'd given them all the phones. How am I not giving them all my text messages, all my emails? But that's not all they were asking for. Things are on your computers, like fucking you printed document. Like they're asking for, though they're asking for very specific things. And if you just give them other things. They're like, well, you're not giving, like, it's like HK, I need a, a Phillips head screwdriver. And you're like, you know what's better than a Phillips head screwdriver? A jackhammer. I already gave you five pliers, a jackhammer, and a saw. You clearly don't need a Phillips head screwdriver because I already gave you all those other things. In fact, I've given you more than you've asked for. Yeah. Defaulted, and then they have <laughs> from my lawyers a whole phone. Okay? And, and so th this is the type of crap... Th in the Perry Mason moment, they go, we got you, we got your phone, and you didn't give us the stuff. And I went, you got my phone because I gave it to my lawyers. Yeah, yeah, that's how they knew that you, the stuff that they were asking for, you totally had access to because they looked through your texts and you were referencing the fucking thing they were asking for that you didn't give them. You absolute idiot. <laughs> yeah, like the the fact that he gave them his whole phone accidentally, which... So they, they didn't ask for his whole phone. They didn't ask for a complete image of his phone, but his lawyers gave them a complete image of his phone with all the text messages. Those text messages proved that he was lying to them. So right. That they didn't was the Perry Mason moment. And now he's like, he's lying about that. Right. They didn't contain the thing they were asking for and didn't get. They contained references to the things they were asking for and didn't get. That could have just been show, like, let's say we were subpoenaed for the show notes for our fucking two weeks ago on Sunday. And I sent you a text message, be like, hey, did you get the show notes? But then I told them, I'm like, what show notes? They're like, well, what are we talking <laughs> to this guy about? The, what do you mean when you said this guy? Think about the show notes. Like, you're lying. Yeah. So either you're lying to him <laughs> or you're lying to us. But he appeared on your show and seemed to have the fucking show notes on the show. So, like, <laughs> he seemed to know what the fuck you were talking about every time. So... And they're like, well, you gave us the raw phone, you son of a bitch. So I'm like, yeah, my lawyers messed up and did that. I got nothing to hide. I'm like, here's my three phones in the last seven years. I kept them, take all the things off. And he the keeps phones kind of a long time for a rich guy. I bet he had a bunch of other phones. The best they got was my wife taking a dick pic of me that I never, I'm like, I never took a dick pic. And I'm like, look at the, I go, oh my God, my wife goes, remember that time you were asleep? I took a picture. And so they have a picture of my ding dong. So <laughs> that's, that's the time. I don't believe that weirdness. story. And it doesn't matter. Yeah, like that's, but they wouldn't ask for it. You just gave them an image. They just got a hold of an image of your phone and they had to look at everything. Like they, they don't care. It didn't come up. Oh, it God. wasn't, his, his dick wasn't entered into evidence. I feel so bad for those lawyers who had to sift through Alex Jones dick pics. Uh, oh. That, that goes on. Then the PR firms, after they won, came out and said, and they got bought by the biggest PR, P, P, PR firm in the country right after that. They, they were already big. Like that York, that to they? me, they, like, no, my wife took that picture of my dick with my phone. 
that to me rings about as true as like you know those guys who like send a girl a dick pic and then will be like oh whoops sorry i dropped my phone and it took that picture so he's still talking if you notice he keeps mentioning these pr firms right pr firms pr firms right he said that a bunch of times so far okay he keeps saying oh the pr firms did this and the pr firms dad did that at my trial so i don't think he was prosecuted by pr firms okay he's referring to the prosecution maybe well okay or to the plaintiff's (laughs) lawyers right because he wasn't charged with a criminal offense these were civil okay yeah (laughs) Then the PR firms, after they won, came out and said and they got bought by the biggest PR, P, 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 PR firm in the country right after that. They, they were already big out of New York. Who were they? And they, I forget the exact uh, name. Jimmy's well. fucking co-host accidentally asked a pretty good fucking question. Listen right again. That, they were already big out of New York. Who were they? And they. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem that Alex has here is he just lost a defamation suit, right? For lying about the victims of a, of a shooting. And um, you know who got lawyers? A PR firm. <laughs> <laughs> so, watch this. This is great. Watch this. They, I forget the exact name. If you want, I'll Google it. <laughs> it's not the I'm ones that try to do Rogan, is it? The scumbag Midas Touch, Misles Brothers. That's the ones who got that thing going at Rogan. Uh, the big N-word Spotify controversy because he mentioned Ivermectin. That's those well, guys. Yeah, I don't want to get into inside baseball because uh, Joe's asked me not to, but let's just say you're you're hot. So the Midas Touch is not a PR firm. They're like one of those, you remember, they're like one of those like clickbait, like here's clips, here's clips of Alex saying yeah. this. You, yeah, you know who they are. They're yeah. you're like Upworthy was like the original big one like that, right? They do sort of the same thing that like Media Matters or Right Wing Watch does, but they're like more clickbaity, I think, than, yep. than Right Wing Watch. And so that's not a PR firm, right? That's like a, like a content yeah. farm. That's... Like the best you could say is that like they're a media company. Well, then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we do a some version of that, right? I mean, we're we use yeah. stuff from those kinds of entities to pull clips, especially for Sunday. But that's not a PR firm. And Alex doesn't. He's like, oh, I can email it to you. I can email it to you. But he's like mentioned these PR firms on several different interviews and never says the name. And that's because there's no PR firm. Nope. I think when he says the P, when he says a PR firm, he is like operating under the assumption basically he might just be meaning like the Daily Beast, Salon, um, things like the Midas Touch, Right Wing Watch, uh, Media Matters, all those fucking websites that what they do is they track they just, their 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 content is just posting videos of people like Alex, Jimmy, other other like kind of right wingers. That's what that's their their yep. their, their their project, and I think he I think he's sort of mixing all of those people together in his mind and calling it a PR firm. And then somehow it got bought by a bigger PR firm, but he's also seems to be mixing the plaintiff's attorneys in there too. Like these people all just work for global corp, global corp, global. Although he could also be implying that like the plaintiffs themselves were working for a PR firm, like the, the families of these children that got killed. Right. But the thing is, there is no like giant PR firm. And if he came up with the name of a PR firm, they'd be like, oh, shit, get re- let's let's restart this process, Alex. Yep. Here's our attorney. And here's what you've said about us. And we can demonstrate to you through uh, you've heard of discovery. You weren't very good at it, that we have done none of what you're saying that oh, this over here, the thing you're saying we did well, the Daily Beast did that. The thing you're saying, oh, that was Salon. I don't know why the intellectual dollar tree showed up on here, but here we are. There's a weird podcast that said this other thing you're saying, <laughs> like, you know, like, oh no, that was the guys over at knowledge fight, sir. That's who said that, you know, this has nothing to do with that, but he knows that. And so I don't know what he even means here when he says PR firm. I think he just means everybody that doesn't like him. I think he's just trying to poison the well. He's just trying to say like, these arguments are invalid. The arguments against me are invalid because they're coming from a source that you shouldn't trust. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, he's, <laughs> Oh, I don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a clip of him saying Jar Jar Binks has a black Caribbean accent. 
I don't know. You're, 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 you're I'm just curious because I bet there's a couple. Well, there, there was a whole bunch yeah. of them. It was a whole bunch. I mean, I could search engine it. It has a particular name. It, 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 well, collab of lot of lot of. Thank you for following. They put out press releases. Like, why don't they just say like, yeah, go ahead. We'll wait. Saying, hey, we brought his evil to the attention of the public in 2018. Then we got him sued, and now we're going to shut him down. So what they did is they went and cobbled together some stuff, blew it all up. Exaggerated at times a hundred. Oh, I know exactly and, and, why they didn't say that because they want to suck his dick. Well, in the grocery store, go and listen, you son of. They a just bitch. hope that some of his this is even like a year popularity ago. will dribble onto Jimmy Door. I've now since been there at the court case. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't. No one ever went to their houses. No one peed on. There's no proof. They just get up on the stand. Listen Wait, the PR firms are up on the stand now. Like this is doesn't like this even on its own. Fuck it. Like if you like. Take away the context, even what he's saying doesn't make any sense, right? He's mm. he's the one that was on the stand. There were witnesses on the stand, but he's like confusing what was happening out there in like the media space about him with what happened in the courtroom. There was an FBI agent. I never said his name. I don't think that he's Look confusing at- anything here. I think he's just lying well like the dude is a liar i think it's possible that he's just conflated all this in his head because he's got this idea that he's been victimized but who knows whether or not maybe whether or not he believes it in this way this is what he's saying this up was it was it it was it was in court i mean he does know that he's a liar because he admitted it in court when he could not get around it get up on the stand listen to this there was an FBI agent. I never said his name. Look this up. It was, it, it, it was, it was in court. They admitted it. Never said his name. No one ever covered it on my network at InfoWars. Didn't know who he was. The internet saw him with his gun pointing up the wrong direction uh, with a, no FBI uh, stuff on when he went in. And he is an FBI agent. And he sued me saying because a few people called his office to see if he was real. That was his testimony. He got $95 million dollars. I never said his name, didn't know who he was till he sued me. And then my lawyer goes, has Mr. Jones ever said your name? No. You actually don't have to know someone's name to defame them on your show. That is correct. Well, what happened to you? And he goes, well, I had to take six hours of psychological stuff because one time a man called me at the office to see if I was really an FBI agent. $95 million. I mean, that is in the trial where I couldn't respond. Did that happen? The judge gave us over 30 things. I, I mean, based say. on I I was in- other things that Alex Jones, ha- Alex Jones has said in the last five minutes of this, I'm going to assume that that's 100% false. I don't doubt there was an FBI agent who sued him. I mean, I just doubt every single part of that story. Bankruptcy. <laughs> Couldn't say that I uh, only talked about it in 22 minutes in all those years. Never could tell people I'd apologized before they ever- No, 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 no. In the trial, dude, they only had to submit 22 minutes of video evidence to make their point. That's not all they had. They just couldn't, like, otherwise the trial would still be happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> if they were like, you have, here, you have to watch 900 hours of video. Like, God. Never sued me because I'm like, I'm not the Sandy Hook guy. I apologize. I apologize. I think it happened. I was just playing devil's advocate. It's this is like what you say after you're already getting sued. You're like, I disavow. I disavow. Both judges in Connecticut and Texas literally had the same list. I couldn't say. And that's why when I did say I'm in bankruptcy, she goes, shut it down. Get the jury out. Get off the stand. Go sit down. And she goes, Mr. Jones, you're a liar. You're not bankrupt. You're not broke. And she goes, now financial expert and we could not respond got up for a full day and said this man i've examined his books and never examined our books is worth 400 million dollars then how did he i thought you said you gave them everything they asked for <laughs> wouldn't your books be part of the sea like it's all self it's contradictory did you give them everything they asked for i think your financials would have been part of what they asked for up oh, that you never gave them your books oh well i guess you didn't give them everything you asked for and that's why the summary judgment happened because one of the things they said give us your financial records he was like what financial records e- either he gave them the financial records and the fucking financial expert combed over them or he didn't right <laughs> like also i don't remember the details of the story but i remember towards when he was like uh you know when he was about to be 
given the amount that uh, he had to pay up, uh, he started shuffling money around, moving it into like fresh new companies that were owned by like Crypto I think too. his parents. Crypto too, and oopsie. <laughs> if you remember the timing yeah. of this, oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> I was millions in the hole then. Okay? Millions in the hole then. And I'm but like, nobody was going to lend him money. He's what the, the Nobody's going to lend you millions of dollars. Get the fuck out of here. And, and so, again, whether you think I'm good or bad, folks, they murdered justice in a, in, in a PR run operation. And then, I'm not supposed to get into this, but you were really, you weren't warm. You were white hot with what you said. <laughs> he doesn't even remember what he's talking about now. He's like the Midas Touch, the PR firm, but the Midas Touch, like somebody in a, a YouTube said, uh, they just post a bunch of videos saying Trump is bad. It's like a it's like a clickbait thing. Some of the stuff they get is good because they have people sending them stuff and whatever. But like now he has no idea what he's he's like he's like lost his. I mean he never had the plot, but whatever plot he thought he was on, he lost that too now. He's just completely freewheeling here, just fucking winging it. And like a good interviewer would have stopped him and been like, we're going to have to fucking take a few of these things one by one here because I'm having a hard time. I think you're, you're even if they were sympathetic to him, they could say, hey, you know, I think you're like fired up about this and we're going to have to slow down and kind of explain to the audience what's going on here. And he would crumble. <laughs> David, like they, uh, what? Which firm was that? The other dumbass on this show. He was like, "Oh, he's like, maybe I can find out what firm it is." Nope, no, sir. In fact, you just asked a very difficult question, didn't you? <laughs> Got the text messages, and imagine whose text messages are on there. Innocuous stuff like, "Hey, let's get a steak." Hey, what's going on? Hey, man, come to the club tonight. And then there was a behind the scenes. Oh shit, Alex Jones be clubbing harassment operation that went on against somebody. So, so this is dragnet. Just attack. Go after whoever. I don't think can. Alex Jones goes to any clubs. It's what they do to espionage, like people for espionage. Yeah. So, and, and, you That's know, what they do for people with espionage. Well, I'm ranting on that, but let me just throw this bookmark in and then I'll shut up, Jimmy. I, I knew this when Obama left. He's not going to shut up. In don't the believe him. Defense Authorization Act 2017. His last act, major act, was to sign the defense authorization. He got $2 billion in there to set up the Office of Countering Foreign Disinformation Propaganda Act which then started that Trump's a Russian agent and yeah. now we can spy on his whole operation and we can get General Flynn because he's a communist and then now they have the hearings off of that. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but Flynn was convicted of being a foreign spy, right? Or <clears throat> well, having, it wasn't uh, like being a, a foreign agent and not registering yeah not registering as a foreign agent or something along yeah. those lines and he was pardoned by donald trump which means he technically yes. admitted his guilt in in that yes he was pardoned except accepted the pardon which means yeah he admitted his guilt so like <laughs> he, he he himself admitted that he's guilty but i do want to like People are like, why the fuck are you watching this on the intellectual Dollar Tree? And I want people to think a little bit about how Eric Weinstein talks about the forces out there that are preventing him and Brett from like having the Nobel Prize or from him solving physics. It is the tone is very different, but the payload is very similar. Because it is this unknown force out there that is you know, part of the establishment or whatever that is wants to prevent them from putting their ideas out. Eric calls it the disc. If you remember, I forget what that means, but he's talking about like yeah. the science establishment. And he talks about that in very much the same way that Alex Jones just talks about society at large thinking he can go fuck himself. I don't, I, I understand that the presentation is so very different that maybe people aren't going to draw the parallels, but I, I think that in the end, the payload is the same is that everybody's out to get me and I have the truth and people are being very unfair to me. And like the consequences for Alex have been dramatic and the consequences for Eric, if you ask Eric, have been dramatic too, because people make fun of him. And I mean, that's the worst thing you could ever do to anybody. But the, <clears throat> the, like the core idea about one's own self-importance and the, the mission that, that someone is on, it feels the same from both of them. If you strip away yeah. like the, the presentation style, you strip away the aesthetics Uh, yeah, I think we, you're right. 
Oh, we could watch the, uh, the we go after this. I think after this, actually, we're going to watch uh, Jimmy Dora. The, the time that Jimmy Dora got absolutely wrecked by Sam Cedar when talking about uh, Donald Trump in 2015 or 16. We'll watch that next. Wheel. They built the spokes of the censorship, the surveillance, the FBI, the CIA coordinating all the censorship. That's all admitted. I knew that. I This would get no news coverage. I remember right when I was deplatformed four years ago watching the House Armed Services Committee meeting where they had the Pentagon experts saying, Mr. Jones is a Russian disinformation agent. We're tracking They did him. not say and that. We're now working with big tech. A spy does not go in there and tell you who they're tracking, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> they did not. This is, I have not seen the thing he's talking about, but they did not say this. Whoever went in there to talk to them wouldn't be the one who was actually monitoring the information. That's somebody who, uh, who actually that's, that's the, that's the fucking <laughs> intelligence service about this person. They're like, I'm sorry. What? Oh shit. A squirrel. Bye. And AI to block his Russian influence. I have the clip. So what I'm saying is it, what, exactly what your co-host just said is that is what I was. And, and that, and we know a three letter agency use law firms the top Democrat law firms in the country ran this law firms, PR firms, but it was the justice department. Listen to this in my bankruptcy. And they were done up. Remember when he was like, I'm going to shut up. Like what feels like an hour ago. This is a year ago. <laughs> the justice department. I told you, don't believe him. He's not going to shut up to my famous bankruptcy lawyer here. And well-known super respected, done some of the biggest bankruptcies in the country for like chemical giants and says, Mr. Jones will not be afforded the bankruptcy. I don't think system. he knows how to shut this up. This is a hurdle he will not get across. And then the Justice Department came into the case. And when I'm in these depositions, they have one to two federal agents in the room hoping to find something. And I've been so transparent, so real. All the bookkeeping checked out. Everything was true. Remember all the headlines? Alex Jones, he's got secret accounts. Alex Jones has offshore accounts. Alex Jones has hundreds of millions of dollars. You can go to Bloomberg. I was you and honors. Yeah, the Q people the think he's like controlled opposition. Oh, no shit. He's showing Alex us a piece Jones of paper on his stream now. <laughs> and his guns. I have and the documents. Look, I got to print it out here. I am three million in the hole right now. You can read them. Here's the headline. Sir, you're like all billion in, in change in the Jones hole, friend. You're not three bi three million in the friend. Uh, you are billions in the hole. Green light to sell his guns and cars. Bloomberg. They now admit that I'm three million in the hole. I was. I was. So so again, I have I, under penalty of perjury all this. So now they flipped from oh we were wrong he didn't hide four hundred million dollars to oh up, sorry. Lisa. Oh, they also sued my dad, my mom, my family. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was it. I think it was that uh, he had a bunch of money and then some people sued him for defaming them. He lost and now he owes a bunch of money. All savings, who was a dentist for 50, 49 years. My dad has no money, can't even pay his property taxes. My dad spent a million and a half dollars in the last couple. And they think it's funny. It is. I think it's funny claiming oh, my yeah. dad had hidden money. I, I know I'm ranting. I'm going to shut up now. So, and the and the reason. I mean, again, why, so I uh, the reports were that he sent his parents a bunch of money. So I'm not surprised that his dad has had to give back a lot of that money that Alex tried to hide in his dad's account. And his dad was uh, intimately involved with Infowars. Okay, I had said that well first they come for alex jones and then they're going to come for us at, first they came for alex jones and i was like yes at, if you're doing <laughs> independent news and you're speaking against the wars they're going to come for us and so that's why you have to stand up right now and of course nobody at the young turks will ever go against the wars they're always for the wars they're always for whatever they're always against the wars the establishment wants whether it's smearing julian assange or pushing russia gate hoax or covid lockdowns and to, and demeaning ivermectin and lying about that they're all for all of it so that's why Dude, they ivermectin care. was very sad too actually or that you got banned because that, they're they never defamed ever ivermectin the well, they're given talking points nobody i could tell nobody right. gives you talking points nobody gives me talking points yeah. and that's why they don't like us is because that's why they don't like joe rogan joe rogan says exactly what he really thinks and they but, that's, but what he thinks is oftentimes pretty stupid. Like authenticity. But the people <laughs> yes, like it. that is so, the yeah, problem. You were big back in the time you defended me. You were big. You're gigantic now. So it's kind of fair what Tucker said is no huge show defended Jones. No okay. show he heard of. 
So and so what it went from you and then it immediately went to journalists and then it went to leading journalists. Then it went to the leading doctors and scientists in their field. And then it went to the former president of the United States. They banned everybody. So it wasn't just Al. That's Joe. right. Nobody's they, even they anywhere. Anybody and everybody, including anybody who had any counter. I need another drink. I'll be hide back. your wife. Hide your kids. They've been in everybody around out here. COVID, around lockdowns, around January 6th, around anything. Anybody who had anything to say that the CIA, the FBI and the establishment didn't want them to say they banned. And they censored and they discredited. And I've I've been I've uh, I've firsthand have knowledge of that. You know what? The one of the first bullshit testing on who we can like do this do was uh, Gamergate. There's people that work in real journalism that to this day still bring that up like that was a real thing. And it was the exact same kind of bullshit. I had the whole media do it to me for a week. Mm-hmm. Charlie Rose, I'll never forget that tweet, Emmy. Then he got me too later. That piece of shit, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. So, so do you think the reason why they went after you so hard and they and and I didn't understand anything down, that guy just said. This I understand the words, stuff, but twist your words to, to take you down was so that they could set a precedent, so they knew what was coming, so they knew that they were going to want to censor uh, anybody and everybody, and so they had to have somebody to start with, and that's what that was. I, I actually know this, and I always forget the name of the article because I don't usually subscribe to stuff, but I had to get behind a paywall to find it. About six months before I got deplatformed in August of 2018, when Tim Cook literally held a powwow meeting, he admitted and decided to curate me, and they wouldn't even say why. And then they gave some fake reasons later, not Sandy Hook. Um, I remember six months before that, I don't remember the exact Wall Street Journal headline, but there was another article about it called, Hold On to Your Tinfoil Hat, Alex Jones. I think it was like Gizmodo. Hold on to your tinfoil hat, Alex Whoa. Jones. You're about to be... You're about to be taken off the air. And then it was a synopsis of the Wall Street Journal. This Wall Street Journal article was one of those articles for the corporate elite. And so it was like 25 Hold, 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 hold the phone, everybody. The Wall Street Journal is uh, writing articles for the corporate elite. <laughs> <laughs> hold the phone. Everybody, uh, they just broke news here that the Wall Street Journal is um, for and uh, to some extent by the corporate elite. <laughs> hold the fucking phone. <laughs> And I forget the exact headline, and it, and it was NATO meeting with the tech heads in Europe wow. and meeting with news with with, with news. Jimmy's just like wow, like right in the middle of what he's saying. Alex is like, stop interrupting me. And they said in the article, uh, "Don't worry, when News Corp splits and sells its entertainment uh, division, we're still going to be popular." So this was to the shareholders of of, of News Corp through the Wall Street Journal that they actually you know, all, yes. also own on, on the news division when it splits. Yes. And I'm, so I'm reading this 20 something page article and it says soon the Internet will be like cable TV. I think they use Netflix as an example. You'll have a thousand yes. channels, maybe, yes. but that'll be it. We're not going to no. let people go to all these old sites and alternative sites. And we're going to do it by going after Assange when the left doesn't stand up for him. And the journalists Wait, this don't. is not what they told the shareholders Wait, the shareholders are like you're doing what? And I just want to know how when much you're going to make, make me that? money. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, this would make the shareholders sell their stock. <laughs> They'd be like, what are you talking about? You're the Wall Street Journal. You're just supposed to, like, tell me that it's okay to be, like, a parasite. That I'm just the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> what are you doing here? What is this shit? They're not telling the shareholders of the fucking of News Corp. They get the fuck out of here. We're going to, we're going to, we're demonizing Alex Jones. He's a horrible person. When we then take him off the air and the right wing doesn't stand up because they don't want to be next, then when we take off the next person, the next person, the next person, it's, it's human nature, no one will stand up and we'll take them all. Oh, first they came. It's the first they came for. I've got to find that article again. But it was <laughs> yeah, good luck. Page battle but it's on your own right. website, I'm Alex. On air with it and I say, written I'm about by to be Paul taken Watson. Because that was a high level article, not for pop culture, but for real high level article. Yeah. You, well, you claimed that it was like a dispatch to the shareholders and yeah, people into Taylor Swift probably aren't going to read the news corp shareholder uh, press release. That's correct, sir. It's not for the trendies core when they split their, their entertainment division and they explained, we're going to end freedom on the internet and we're going to use this punk to do it. So I, it wasn't that I was that important. They, I was big. Sure. And I was populist and they fear that. And I was uncontrolled. But they chose me because I did do clownish stuff a lot. And I, and I still do. I have fun. I'm on the air four hours a day. 
And oh, so yeah, I, totally fun. I was just chosen as patient zero along with Julian Assange. It was me and Julian is, is who was in the article. And it's very cold blooded. So, yes. Oh, he used to hate Julian Assange, by the admit, way. Called him like a socialist admit, and shit back I was in the, the day. First domino. Shout out to Knowledge Fight and for finding old Alex Jones shit where he like says all kind of weird shit about fucking Julian Assange. The feds tried to take your cat, right? Were you able to keep him? Well, no, it's because he listed his $2,000 fucking weird ass fucking cat that probably needs special food and will fucking fall and break a hip as one of his assets. Uh, it, it's <laughs> actually true. Um, my my uh, wife, the cat's like four years old now. Uh, we got for my now six year old daughter. She wanted a cat. The other cat we love so much had, had snuck out of the house and got down the street and got run over. And so the cat like fucking committed death by car because it learned English and lived in your house. Alex the cat was like, Oh no, I can't, I can't be associated with this. Where's the nearest, where's the nearest uh, major roadway. Goodbye. Cruel world. <laughs> Meow. Oh, don't That's worry, sad. didn't do it on Catterday. It's all right. So uh, <laughs> we heard that ragdoll cats were really great. Other Joe Rogan stories, this is the best cats ever, super smart. So I get a ragdoll, and folks, they are amazing. Uh, it's, like, it's like a dog. It's super smart. We go on walks on the golf course. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Listen, one day he walks I walk his in, cat. and the cat's a year old, and it's on the toilet pissing. Sw didn't teach it out. It just... <laughs> swear to God, <laughs> and so, so my point is... I mean, uh, to be fair, the government should take that cat and do experiments on it. Like, oh, you taught a cat to pee in the toilet. This would be great for everybody. The deposition with the U.S. Justice Department and like six lawyers, no, seven lawyers deposing me in the conference room. They came here in the conference room right through those doors and they look at me. And, and, and the, you're a dumbass. You had the deposition in your own studio so the lawyers could go look around your fucking studio. <clears throat> He was in the deposition room, and there was fucking, I bet there was somebody out there kind of off the record or whatever, just opening doors and see what they find in the fucking studio. Probably. I'm not saying you, you should legal or that you should do that, but that would be a good job for me, because I, uh, I would just pretend I was lost. I'd be like, oh, I was looking for the bathroom. The federal, the federal Justice Department says, Mr. Jones, how much did your cat cost? And I said, I think it cost $2,000. And they said, all right, well, we're going to put that Federal on the Justice said, Department. Shut the fuck up. We're give up. And I said, is that a joke? And they said, no, we're, we're serious. Uh, and, but they're going to give me an opportunity. My bankruptcy is almost I don't over. believe that that right happened. Care about. They might ask, if, how much is your cat worth? You bought a $2,000 cat. Sir, you're not broke. Soon. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to have my dad or somebody uh, buy the cat for me. So, no, they, they are trying to take the cat. Wow. Kind of, kind of unbelievable. Uh, this transcends the fucking IDW bingo card, everybody. Don't worry. I, Maybe I, I we'll run Eric Weinstein real. after this. So real Jimmy really Dore like said, it. kind of unbelievable. Uh, I don't think that's strong enough. That is completely unbelievable. I don't believe that that actually happened. It's like when you say incredible, but you don't mean fantastic. <laughs> yep. the, pigs. The, news, the news called him and they admitted it. They think that's great. Like They think, yeah, his whole life. It, it's it's like uh, cancel pigs, but but you know with the this real, is like Jimmy Dore's own Dan Badondi here. What's this? Full force of the U.S. government behind them. <laughs> By the way, the Willie Nelson story is true too. Well, tell, tell me, Dore tell me about he, that. He, speaking of Willie Nelson, yeah. I used to know Johnny, Willie and he was like, I don't know, here I have the bottom Willie of this Nelson bag of Austin. weed, and that's like probably yeah, like a week's worth of weed for me. And, he, and he, you know, he he hated George Bush. He saw my movies about the war, and so he came to one of my movie showings one time. And so for about two years, I hung out with him probably 10, 15 times. I mean, I, and in a few years, about 10 years ago, I, I went to dinner with him once, but he's kind of, he, even then his brain was not all, not 100% what he used to be. But Wait, I what? Fuck you. Seven. You're like, he was bragging about being friends with Willie Nelson and be like, oh, Willie Nelson's old and dumb now. Fuck you. Willie Nelson is a national treasure, sir. Five. He even invited me out to Maui and stuff. I never went. But, but the point was, we got to be decent friends. And I'd go out to his house. Alex Jones, you are not a decent friend to anyone, him, especially not that God, wonderful God. cat. And he has those those vaporizer volcanoes back before most people heard of them. This is like, you know, in like 2000, 2007 and eight and stuff. Everybody knew and what that we was. We would smoke pot till I couldn't walk. <laughs> vaporizer <laughs> volcano? Does he mean he a gravity bomb? Kidding. No, he means like those. It's uh, it's, um, you know, those vaporizers that fill up a giant plastic bag. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what he 
Fuck that's off. just a vaporizer. Right, but they, the Volcano was the brand name of it. Of the one oh, of the okay. popular one's friend. Okay. Like, I don't smoke that much weed anymore, but I, I, know, I know what people are talking about. Would suck on it and keep saying, one more, and he would just keep going. I mean, when he says, roll me up and smoke me. But the point was, when Willie Nelson hands you that thing, it's dripping with spit. And I'm like, I'm not going to wipe this off. It's kind of cool. I'm not gay. But I, I was like, it's Willie Nelson. I, so, so I would be like, like stop slobbered on the bag. Willie Nelson spit my like, Willie. That's not like he's worried that that makes him sound gay. No, it makes him sound fucking weird. Right. He you wants just, to drink Willie Nelson spit. That's weird. The other thing is you just be like, hey, man, you slobber a little on the bag. You mind if we uh, mind if we make me a bag? And then he goes, oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, sorry about that, man. Willie Nelson's fucking chill as shit, dude. <laughs> you know, he's not going to be like, "Oh, I'm broke. I'm out of weed." <laughs> like, <laughs> he'd be like, "Oh yeah, absolutely. Here, let me show you how to do it." Like, here, here's a bunch of bags, and like, here, here's like a fucking, here's like a, here's like, I don't know. This is like a fucking four cubic feet of weed. Just use as much of this as you want. Take whatever you need home. <laughs> and then I was, I was telling a story just the other day. To family and some friends and i go wait a minute jimmy door spit into my mouth because if you watch the video i'm like oh yeah and all of a sudden he goes Meh. and i remember like i was like is that iced tea or coke i actually i got so much of it in my mouth just a funny story oh it, it was called it was actually called honest neither of those stories were really funny good. they were both weird so i'm just fired up to be on and to actually i have willie it. nelson sues him for defamation I'm now like <laughs> on my own show so I'm on some radio stations. A lot of folks. I mean, I feel like he didn't defame Willie that, Nelson. He defamed he himself. The worst part about being canceled. He was like, "Oh man, I just couldn't wait to consume all that Willie Nelson spit." Like that's fucking weird and gross. Yeah, if somebody's slobbering all over the bong or the joint, and maybe they're like a little bit older or whatever, and they're rich, you're like, "Hey, you got another bong?" Or could you have? Could you? Could you hand me the grinder? I'll just roll my own joint. You're slobbering over this shit. You know, I just want to fucking. You know, I, I ain't mad. Thank you for sharing with me. Like, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm like, uh, uh, if I'm kink shaming here, but I just think <laughs> wanting to consume someone else's spit is fucking weird. I don't think that's really a kink. <laughs> I'm sure it's someone's kink. Fake person. What's that rule? However, 47 or 49 so or whatever it is. You find okay. about like, go away like Obi Wan Kenobi. And I don't mean like making out is weird. Like making out, not. sure, whatever. And that's so fine. I mean, like, someone else's, like, s slobber is on something, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna consume that slobber. That's fucking weird. That's some groupie shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, a, like, fucking, the old dude from Poison drooled on my jacket sleeve. I'm never watching this jacket. It's worse. <laughs> they run headlines. Yeah. Alex Jones sends child porn. To Sandy Hook families. And I couldn't go on Twitter. I you didn't have to bring that up, did you? That's not true. They. So what happened here? He didn't actually have it or whatever. It got like emailed and it got caught by like a spam filter or whatever. Right. Like he never saw. There's no evidence that he ever looked at it or anything like that. So he didn't need not to bring it up, actually. You know what I'm saying? Wait. So this this is a story that actually happened. Um, Not like. I looked into it when it happened. Right. And it was that. It was okay. attached to email to him, but the email never made it into his inbox, essentially. Okay, so someone emailed child porn to I, him we, I, we don't and know someone who it, else? We don't know who it was, what the context was. We don't, we don't know anything about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, will, I won't let you like, like, draw any inferences from it. Okay. The, the, I, the media made, the media talked about it in a dishonest way. I, I've literally never heard this story, so I don't even know what to think. Um, also, the it's child sex abuse material, not porn. Porn is uh, uh, consensual and a um, a legitimate job for people, by the way. just That's child sexual abuse material, just so people uh, know here. Subpoenaed yeah. 9 million emails. They said, no, it's not enough. We want all, and we were dumb enough, because why are we even storing it, to have 15 years of emails on this email system. And we said, screw That's how your email works. Because you're running a business, you stupid fuck. My lawyer said nothing to hide. We searched it. None of me scheming against them. None of me talking about them. I had crazy sending me emails about Sandy Hook, which they later put in the court. Look what this lady sent you. Doesn't that sound bad? Oh, that's the proof I'm bad. And 
someone who was attacking me for questioning you know, that lady worked for you probably Andy Hook, <laughs> sent me emails you had her on as a guest with embedded invisible links to child porn they just happened to scan uh, the millions of emails and find the, the 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 hidden links so we got a letter from the fbi in days saying mr jones is the victim of this they were actually nice and did that and Jones is not a suspect. He, these were unopened emails because they give it to the FBI. Yeah, this is, this is true. Emails that he never opened, <clears> but he doesn't need to bring it up. Someone sending it's it not to like him. it's like swatting somebody, but uh, you know, yeah, right. a, a, another form of so so so. But oh, the headlines didn't say that. The headlines said Alex Jones sends child porn. No, no, no. It Why said it was found on, on your servers. This he's right. But what he's describing wouldn't be finding child sex abuse material on his server. It would be finding a link to it, which is a different thing. Right. And I'll, I'll just I'll just say the fucking the fucking like the the thing he's calling a PR firm. They actually kind of overblew this and because it's he it had nothing to do with him. I don't know if it was his followers. I don't know if there were people out to get him. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Who knows who sent that to him? Um, oh, the FBI probably knows now. And that person, bye. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's who sent, sent it to him. Probably somebody who's uh, maybe maybe not able to leave the building they're in very, very often. <laughs> so again, that tells you about these PR firms. Yeah. It's like you're running for office, but just to live your life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So. Let me just ask you just a general okay, question. Okay, so this that, what he just said, is dumb. The, you buy the ticket, you take the ride. If you're going to be a controversial fit public figure, you we say it about like Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson, right? You bought this ticket, Alex. You wanted to be a famous fucking like counterculture figure in the conspiracy movement. You bought this ticket, dude. Uh, how much of our reality do you think is manipulated by elites or intelligence tricks? It depends on the person. Uh, very little. Because my reality, like I'm burning a joint. I'm like, this is real. Like I have cameras here. Like everything around me is real and has not been. He means like how much of our information space is being manipulated. Yeah. Media. And then like, what does he mean manipulated? Our intelligence agencies like, all over the world trying to manipulate the media in their own country and everybody else's country. Uh, yes. yes. The, isn't the isn't this like isn't this like two millionaires talking to each other asking this question? Hmm. To be fair, Alex is a negative billionaire. <laughs> That's true. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but for uh, more or less, yes. These are people actually who are putting out media that is designed to. In the same way that ours is actually, maybe not manipulate people, but to influence public opinion. Like I don't know what, like I don't know what even, what even, um, what even bone they have to pick with someone else who's trying to influence public opinion. What the fuck are they doing? Like, <laughs> yep. Some people are completely. Some people are totally oblivious, oblivious and pay attention to nothing except for sports or sitcoms or whatever it is they're into. Other people are political, both right wing and left wing, and think they know what's going on. And their establishment right wing, they're in a facsimile of disinformation. And their establishment left wing, they're really in a uh, hologram. And <laughs> well, shit. Did you know that the annoying liberals that you see who are like blue wave, um, I'm with her, that kind of, they're actually living in a fucking hologram. So you can ignore them. A hologram. You can ignore them. They the don't vote suite. or anything. The hollow suite at Quark's Bar. You see Max Headroom? They live inside that TV and you don't even ever see them. And then you've got just normal populist informed people from blue collar workers up to academics uh, that just really get the fact that the public trust has been broken. The mainstream media lies on purpose. Uh, they're very nasty. They're trying to divide the country for social control. That was in the WikiLeaks emails from a head psychologist of a psychology. Department. Wait, they talk about the WikiLeaks like it was an event and not that WikiLeaks is an organization that. Um, I say on balance, Jen broadly did pretty good work um, and not the WikiLeaks. What are you talking about? Like that's in the WikiLeaks. 
Like they've been leaking information like that they get from like, you know what I'm saying? They've been gathering information from like confidential sources for so fucking long that the WikiLeaks does it. it, it there's so much that they have uh, published as it is. me. It's like saying it was in the New York Times. And you, you'd be like, OK, well, can you give me more information about that? Because they've made a lot of newspapers. <laughs> like, yeah. You're going to have to tell me which one to look at, friend. <clears throat> I think it was Columbia, but I forget the exact one. And this is certified real WikiLeak. And he, and he says, we're losing because people aren't paying attention to us. It's not that they hate us or even agree with us or disagree. It's that they don't even care about us anymore. So we're going to have to go to culture war. Well, that does sound like an elite person who maybe is losing grip on society because they run a newspaper, right? Sounds like a wow, 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 rich guy with a newspaper. He's like, nobody's even paying attention to me anymore. That's what 2016 that in the middle of the election. So, right. so, so they're using, but also like he's complaining about culture war. Like that's, that's all he does. He calls it an information war, sir. Oh, okay. Culture contains no information. It's back in 2000 and 2010 Obama member Smith uh, modernization act. Legalized propaganda. Exactly. You guys have covered that a lot. I've seen you do that. Ah, he had no idea what he was talking about. He's like, I'm talking something propagation act. He's like, aha, legalized propaganda. He has no idea what the guy was just talking about. <laughs> that guy off camera is doing, uh, actually ac accidentally doing hero's work. I hope he like named a thing that has to do with building a bridge or like, you know, planting a <laughs> forest or, you know, some kind of like boring public works thing. Not because he's trying to troll Alex Jones, just because he's stupid and heard about it one time and is repeating it. <laughs> <laughs> and so th that's the cia so they always planted stories overseas that came back on purpose they had operation mockingbird that came out of the frank church committees in, in, in the 70s late 70s but but this is directly they came out of the frank church okay the the church committee was an investigation into i believe the fbi and the cia the church commission was not a thing that created whatever o occupation operation mockingbird but Op Operation Mockingbird is just like the CIA being like, well, we're going to keep cia and try to influence public opinion uh, in the United States and around the world. And oh, uh, no, actually, we didn't do that. I don't know what you're talking about, because that's the CIA. <laughs> like, that's their fucking job. There's no nothing interesting or new is. Nothing interesting or new is in Operation Mockingbird. Because these are intelligence operations. They try to get information about other countries and manipulate the other country while they're doing it. That's what they fucking do. Like, what the shit else are they doing? Why are they wasting so much of my money if they're not out there, you know, fucking spying on people and kind of trolling them to see what they can get the idiots in that country to believe? Yes, of course they're doing that. <laughs> and they might be doing it here too, but they're not supposed to, but it doesn't matter because what CIA? the cia going after you and look i can speak to the cia people always go oh he admits he's an agent he admits he's bad no i had uh my late uncle was high level <laughs> this is right i was going to tell him this his dad was high level too but actually his dad's also just a dentist who never did anything wrong uh in army special operations and like running stuff in in uh, but that's not the cia operations in iran contra also everybody's fucking grandpa was the shit in the army like I, you're you're supposed to think that about World War Two that your grandpa was in the army and he was the shit. That's the lore about World War Two. That's the accepted lore. Alex is uh been he's accepting the narrative, the uh, the common narrative about everybody's grandpa who was in World War Two. Had a other family that was involved uh, in back when Humat was really big before it was all digital, and and so growing up. Before it was all digital, before you could check on any of this to just see if these people worked for the government ever at all, even as a pretend diplomat. No, you can't. Actually, you can't look this up. This is all super top secret stuff. It's like the um, it's like the Internet didn't exist version of a hipster coffee shop. I had family <laughs> talking trash about the government, how they're lying, how they're full of crap, how both parties are bad. But that doesn't make them a spy. All big corporations <laughs> about all they a, did. Hey, HK, is a, a spy is when you when you think both political parties are bad. <laughs> Around the corner to family where both people 
you know, or have been in, in you know, in this. And, and I'm and like, yeah, that son of a bitch. All we did is go around, you know, Wait. or have been in, in this is me listening <laughs> around the corner to family where both people. What is he doing? Know, or have been in, in, you know, in this. And, and what I'm, is he and doing like, right now? Son of a bitch. All we did is go around paying off the mafia and then <laughs> heads and they didn't follow our orders. And yeah, those bastards are smuggling kids out of Guatemala. They ought to all be shot. And, and, and like, I'm sitting there around the corner. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was both sides of my family, by the way, had people who were in this. And that sounds like, ooh, it's mysterious. No. It's These are just drunk people at your house complaining about the government, Alex. Like they're spies. It's not a, it's not a generational, uh, generational unhealthy alcohol, uh, like relationship with alcohol and delusion. It's uh, they're spies. Walmart before the mid nineties, when signals intelligence and digital spying on the NSA really got to where it could grab every call and every email. Yeah. Like right before he thinks <laughs> right before there'd be records, even if his, uh, you know, his great aunt was a spy. Well, she was like registered as a diplomat at some point or had a passport or worked for the post office or you know what i'm saying this is before you can get any information about any of these people but they're all like super spies he just said they could grab every email so he doesn't know how email works i mean to be fair the nsa can read any of my emails uh who's your email provider uh google okay yes they can and that's the for most people hk if it's on a server somewhere, they're going to get it. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, so Proton Mail encrypts emails at rest. So, uh, so does Tutanota. No, no, no. I'm so, not saying, I'm not saying, like, if you're, if you, if you, if you know how to encrypt an email, but they're still going to get it. They might not be able to decrypt it, but they're still going to get it if they want it. They could subpoena it and then yeah. you would have to give it to them. I'm not, but comp anyway, I have. <clears throat> The NSA, they also call it no such agency. So they're like, uh, hey, the NSA, did you hack into our email server? They're like, what's the NSA? It was 90% humet, 10% signals. They phased that all out in the mid-90s. But before that, the CIA didn't just have <laughs> Drake's like, what does HK know about email? Oh, it. wait. It was every A lot more than you know about <laughs> Mastodon, apparently. Where it's, it's, it's like saying, oh, I had family work. I tried hard to, to bring it back up before the show, and uh, it, like and it won't let us log in. Classes, patriotic, you know, they had programs in the 60s. Does the database still exist? Yeah, the database is uh, there. Cool. I backed up the database oh, before I be part of NASA. Went we, we, with we, we can fix it. Kids would go who were top of their class. I'm gonna move it to my server over here school. anyway so. and, and say, oh, so. you, you know, you're top of your class. and I see you, you know, do all this and you can shoot really good. Top of the morning, do you? This survey for NASA that you, 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 <laughs> you're top of your class. You got the best grades. Also, you're handy with the steel. You know who wants to talk to you? NASA. <laughs> got space, got a space alien you need to shoot. We're like 12 years old and, you know, you've done all this stuff. We want you to join NASA and we want you to come to the University of Texas when you're 15 next year and we want to put you in a program that happened to one of my family very close to me oh i thought he was saying it happened to him yeah your family was drunk and telling you a tall tale and friend. by the time he was about <laughs> 19 he figured it out and was like whoa i'm not doing this okay so i mean but but, but i mean you couldn't shake a stick swing a stick in the dark you know in, in texas at that time and not hit these people and, and so i mean i've had i've had growing up you know uh uh, uh oh uh you know, a, a German, uh, East German at the house for three months who's being trained how to do something. What? I mean, so I'm, I'm telling you, that's how close no, you, I am. No, 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 friendo, 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 friendo. Your uncle was living at the house at the time and he was drunk and he, he, he met some lady that was like from Eastern Europe and they shacked up. All, All right, dude, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, okay. And that's fine. Actually shack up with fucking shack up with people from other countries. Have fun. Everybody. No is almost the same in every language, so you just listen to that, and you all good. Um, let me just get your take on the Ukraine war, because the American people have no idea what actually the Ukraine war is about. They have no idea. Alex, that Alex's family actually started the war in Ukraine. Coup that the CIA instigated with the help of the Nazis inside Ukraine. Uh, they don't know that there were two peace agreements that Ukraine violated, not Russia. And they think that one day oh, Vladimir Putin just woke up and... Got a bug up his ass and decided. No, to. everybody knew he was going to do it beforehand, Jimmy. What, what are you not paying attention? They were like, for like months, they're like, uh, uh oh. <laughs> like they, by them, I mean like 
the people you say that you always watch because they're wrong, like MSNBC, like CNN, even Fox News was talking about it before it happened. It was predicted by many people before it happened, not because they have a crystal fucking ball, but because they were that information, probably from the fucking CIA, the same one that Alex Jones thinks is busy trying to get him kicked off of fucking Periscope or whatever the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> invade ukraine and that's his first step into invading the rest of europe which <laughs> it just seems mental and because it is and so i wanted this this recently came out um uh, ukraine ambassador chali who participated in peace talks with russia in the spring of 2022 because there was a peace agreement as soon as this war started there was a meeting He's showing a, a tweet agreement, and remember boris johnson was flown at the if i show a tweet it's because i'm making fun of it i'm not going to show a tweet and be like i've done some research here's a tweet like i rarely show tweets <clears throat> i should show more of the tweets uh, of people getting fucking un fucking unimaginably angry at me for nothing i love those people go to the replies section of my twitter is the tweet covering the mouse cursor or is that is that your mouse cursor on top of the tweet? Oh, on your screen, it's my mouse cursor. They got rid of the mouse cursor. Okay. Yeah, I think the tweet is covering the mouse cursor. Okay, that's weird. Behest of NATO to talk to Zelensky to squash it. Well, here, this uh, 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 ambassador is going to talk about that very thing. Here it is. I was in that moment in the group of Ukrainian negotiators. We negotiate uh, with Russian delegation practically two months, in March and April, the possible peaceful settlement agreement with, between Ukraine and Russia. And we, as you remember, concluded so-called Istanbul communique. And we were very close in the middle of April, in the end of April, to finalize... Jimmy's drinking out of that fucking cool-ass purple fucking... It doesn't even have his logo on it. Fucking... Some peaceful fucking, settlement. Fucking amateur For some reasons, shit. It was postponed. But to my mind, Putin, this is my personal view, Putin in one week after started his aggression in 24 February last year, very quickly understood he did mistake is that when he started the aggression i figured it was when he invaded ukraine in 2014 include agreement with ukraine and istanbul communique it was his personal decision to accept the text of this communique which totally Alex Jones is not paying a lick of attention to this right initial proposal like Alex jones is like picking his nose or Fucking drinking whiskey, probably drinking whiskey. Actually, I heard he's a vodka guy. ...of Russia, which they put before the Ukrainian delegation in Minsk. So we managed to find a very real compromise. So Putin really wanted to reach some peaceful settlement with Ukraine. It's very important to remember. So there it was. There it's, that's an ambassador who was part of the negotiation. But that's just a yeah. But, but what if he? What if I don't know? What if he's in wrong? April of he's like, oh, Putin wanted peace. All right. What if you're an idiot and you got played by a, a Putin was a spy? Twenty twenty. You just got like, oh, Putin. Uh, you know what, Putin? He, he famous Russian intelligence. Uh, we should just believe everything he tells us at this uh, meeting that we're having. Actually, he's an honest guy. They had an agreement, <laughs> a compromise with Putin. Fuck. He's saying Putin really wanted to have peace. He really wanted to he's end. Like, uh, Jimmy, he's he's a, a fucking spy. That means professional liar. Spies aren't running around killing people. Spies are out there lying to you and getting you to tell them things. So that's what well, I do think that Putin wanted peace and he still wants peace, but he wants peace in that Ukraine surrenders or you mean pieces of Ukraine. Yeah, that's what he wants. He does not want peace between Ukraine and Russia. He wants peace because Ukraine is no longer a thing. That's what he wants. And the war. And of course, that all got squashed. Now, Putin has talked about this and we've covered this uh, and it all got squashed because it's fantastic. Great. We don't uh, we're very skeptical of the government, except for this guy over here. <laughs> the UK, meaning NATO, didn't want it. And so they had Boris Johnson go to Ukraine and and tell Zelensky, you better not do this. Plus, he also had the Nazis saying, if you in Ukraine, if you do it, we're going to hang you from a, a tree. 
and uh, Wait, which what? they probably would have. So he didn't do it. So he squashed the peace agreement. So again, is is Jimmy mad that Alex has been talking hell of long? So Jimmy's like, well, hold on, everybody, I can potato too. <laughs> right, Jimmy. Jimmy is like, he was like, God damn, that's a whole lot of potato. And he's like, um, I like baked potatoes, by the way, guys. So you can make a picture of me with a baked potato. That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> and the aggressors are the United States, NATO, uh, the warmongers is the military industrial complex. Was Dan in a well and when he recorded not, that soundbite? To make hmm? Was Dan in a well when he recorded that soundbite? All the sound clips we have from him are from his worst stream ever because he was like mad that like you didn't even know the story. Okay, there's a Facebook <laughs> group like called an empty there's a Facebook, there's a Facebook, that was so echoey. There's a face. He was just fucking. I don't know where he was, but there's a, the the reason we have those clips is he's a, there's a Facebook group called the Couch Gang, and all that they would do is post it like fucking links to like the most crazy live stream you've ever seen and so people would go in there and pretend they were responding to a facebook marketplace ad for a couch <laughs> so they'd be like is the couch still available like but you'd get like a hundred of those <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh here's uh hamburglar dan was like where'd it go there's a funny one here yep uh couch for sale yeah uh, yeah i'm selling the couch uh <laughs> Anyway, Putin out to be this caricature. Ooh, we're 19 of, minutes away from the point where I think we actually do have to cut the podcast. Listeners even, loose even here. though, meanwhile, we're we're occupying. Let's take right a break. We'll play boomers Syria, and move on to some new content. That country and which third do you think we're occupying? The part with the oil. So what do you what do you say to, to this? What do you what what have you told your your viewers about? But wait a minute. If the part where they're drilling for oil is just the part farthest away from. Uh, russia it might be because there might be oil in the other place but they're like we shouldn't put these oil rigs next to this country that's probably going to invade us uh, they'll light them on fire because they put them on the fucking mm -hmm. other end right it's like why yeah. it's like it's like why if you have firearms you don't just leave them in front of your front door <laughs> like with <laughs> the fucking bullets and everything <laughs> right uh some people do well, I've told them the exact same thing you've said because it's the truth. If you go back to nine years ago, the Victoria Newland got caught on a release tape. She didn't deny it. Yeah. The ambassador to the EU saying, screw the EU, screw what they want. We're going to basically start you know, a war. And, and then seven years ago, a few years after that overthrow. That was a direct quote. Screw them. Screw what they want. We're going to you know, basically just start a war. And that coup where they attacked the government, killed all the police and, you know, burned down buildings and installed their new leader that was, you know, more anti-Russia. It's like they, two dudes at a party one-upping each other. With Zarkaria, That's what this is like. Soros, is he talking about Iraq, when Zelensky was elected? I don't, I've, I've lost the plot. Well, that's not even really fair. That's not even fair to myself. I don't know what he thinks the plot is at this point. He described it as installing a new leader. Oh, then that's like, pro that's probably. I it, mean, I oh, guess you could describe an election that way. But. Well, hold on, hold on. People in the chat are following, and they're like, they uh, they know who the leader is supposed to be. We don't, so we're just going to let this keep rolling here. Actually, the chat just told us okay. what they're talking State about. State Department and had done the coup a few years before. And Thank you, Lady B. Happy my birthday to you as well. Began to come into the country. And 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 train the Ukrainian death squads because uh, you know the country split between Slavic and kind of Germanic groups and that was a split in World War II but it's still it's where oh, Russia no was no 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 oh Slavic, yikes dude but uh -uh, was that wasn't the Russians split in World War II in Europe <laughs> sir and so they began to attack those ninety nine percent Russian areas and and Putin kept saying stop doing it stop doing it stop doing it and he said if you try to bring them into NATO I'm going to take Crimea, which he then did a few years later. And he said, I'm going to take the Donbass regions and Donetsk and some of those other areas uh, there on the western border of Russia as a security zone. And, and so it was a provocation by NATO. I'm not defending Russia. I'm not. Yeah, so Russia that's why he file, sent tanks into Kiev. The history of it. And then I knew that's how I was able to predict. In October, don't worry, Jimmy's ago, gonna up plus, the up. The, uh, Jimmy uh, might go Russia flat earth in his next comment. I think now they're like they're the one upping each other at a party February, stage of this was crazy. To, because that was like, no, my like potato is bigger. No, my military. potato is bigger. Whose sons were over back. there already training Ukrainians and they knew it was coming. And so when the Russians lied and said, we're not gonna invade a few weeks before, and 
the Reuters reporter confronted uh, the State Department CIA guy and, and said, you're Alex Jones now, claiming the Russians are gonna, gonna do a false flag and invade or whatever. Uh, but I was saying, no, no, the Russians are gonna go in and they don't want people to know because NATO's moving weapons up against their border. And the, if, if, if Ukraine joins NATO, they've said they're gonna put nuclear weapons uh, yes. there. And, and, and so this is a major escalation. People don't know in the Cuban Missile Crisis that Kennedy put uh, medium range Hercules uh, missiles in Turkey uh, and uh, what was the other missile? The Hawk missiles with nukes in Turkey. And so that's when the Russians right. then put nukes in 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 uh, in uh, Cuba. Cuba. That's why and they don't so, take the point about that with Ukraine because we've provoked it before and thought we should be allowed to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So 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 Russia. Putin's told the truth. By the way, you talk about this ambassador saying that that you just mentioned. You just played. Putin at the time said, "I only want a security zone and I only want to make you sue for peace." And, and he was never planning to take the capital. He did that to pin down their forces. While he secured those areas and so he said i want a peace deal he gave speeches at the time saying this can end right now say you're not going to enter nato and say you're not going to attack uh these eastern areas and i'll completely pull out man this said, this rewrite out, of history is fucking as much of ukraine bonkers we have to to secure our border because remember 90 percent of the russians live is this Russia, a fanfic Russia. and putin said we don't need more land what We're occurred to me i do my best thinking while i'm uh while i'm pouring a drink so I um I thought that they've covered a lot of topics and I feel like like when you interview somebody who knows some shit what if what if you don't cover like 950 topics in you know the first 47 minutes of your fucking interview and you kind of <laughs> talk about something what if you did that Uh Dave I think that sounds crazy because I feel like we've had guests on the intellectual dollar tree where we might be looking at the content, but when like I interview somebody like the, we watched the best of interviews, uh, for, uh, uh, the Catterday before new year's Eve. And, um, I interviewed this guy who thinks he talks to ghosts via a track phone and he thinks it helped him win the lottery. I talked to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> and even Africa. It's like three USA's can fit into Russia. He said, we Wait, don't want to expand. We want to stabilize. We want a peace economy. He cut defense spending until this war started for the last decade. So he's not in an offensive position. The globalists controlling America are in an offensive position. And that's, it has to end. Now they're going to conscript women. Now, uh, well, like armies have women in them, friendo. Forces in Europe last week just called for them to conscript women. Zelensky's calling up 500,000 uh, people, and they know they've already lost. So it's purely a political diversion and a money laundering operation. And it is pure <laughs> war. The money laundering now, friend. Sick and most evil. So hold on. Ukraine yeah. fighting for their freedom against foreign invaders is a money money laundering operation? There's again, what I was saying is that like we're 48 minutes into this and I feel like they've covered more topics than any regular interview would cover in 48 hours. <laughs> yeah. And I'm using the word cover, like as in like cover it in the fucking filth of their speech, right? Like they're not yep. covering any of this. It's just amazing to me how well the propaganda works. Uh, it like we learn nothing from the Iraq War. I mean, as a, as, as a general people, we learn nothing from the Iraq War. We learn nothing from twenty years of lies and and the Afghanistan paper that showed that the Afghanistan papers that showed Afghan was a twenty year lie. That we did learn nothing from Libya turning the most successful country in Africa and turning into a failed state. Yeah, he's just on his. He's just on the fucking. He's just Vietnam. on the gallop. This is like. This isn't like the Gish Gallop. This is like the the Gish Preakness States or whatever. Like, what's a famous horse race? What's a, what like? What's what are famous? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like a it's like a famous horse race. Everybody's there. There. This is a com, a gallop competition. The Kentucky Derby. It's the Gish Gallop Kentucky Derby. It's the Door Derby. We learn nothing from Syria. The Kentucky Derby, very good. The door Derby. Nothing from Yemen. Nothing. We've learned nothing, 
and they could ju- they could just pull off this Ukraine, and then you get these. You can just pull off the Ukraine, you know. It's like when you fucking you just pulled off a of Ukraine. Joe Maddow's and Sean Hannity's and Anderson Cooper's to go on and just lie about the war. And you know they're lying because I know the truth. And who am I? I'm a comedian. And so I know. But why do you think that you know the truth? Like, who knows the truth? Probably nobody, actually. <laughs> we can do our best to try to figure it out, right? Like, but we, we're not going to. HK, we would never say the intellectual dollar tree. We know the truth. Actually, we should say that because it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> right? You shouldn't trust them because I don't trust them, and I'm a comedian, so I know nothing. Well, no, it's not that comedians don't know anything. It's just that they don't, they fucking are living in the world the same way everybody else I mean, is. That's what Jimmy just said. Jimmy right. just said, you shouldn't trust them because I'm a comedian, and I know nothing, and I don't trust them. I mean, he didn't say it in those words, but that was the implication, is that a media He's a which has a good moron, fucking point, and even actually. he doesn't trust them. So, well, well, the media which is like, I'm most offended by Jimmy Dore calling himself a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> the, this show that the media wench hates is funnier than the Jimmy Dore show. About it, I know Agreed. they have to know about it. Because I didn't know the Jimmy Dore show was supposed stats, to be funny. So I don't have that. And, and now, and now they're not. They're not just picking fights with third world Muslim countries right. so they can just pump trillions in you know, like in Afghanistan and, and steal it. No, ladies and gentlemen, and I, and I know the Afghans aren't Arab, but I'm talking about the Arabs, but at least then also. Right, 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 right. Like, oh, we probably just covered like, we just mumbled over like 14 new topics right there. <laughs> the Afghans over there in Central <laughs> Asia. Right, 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 right. Now they're picking fights with the largest nuclear power in the world that lost a third of its population fighting Hitler. So just like Napoleon went, to destroy his empire. <laughs> it's like the Napoleon. American empire is going back to Russia to die. I love America. I'm a loyal American. Putin isn't censoring me. Putin isn't stealing elections. Putin isn't taking my political front runner candidates off the ballot. Putin is Well, Putin pers- pro- possibly tried to purchase one of them. Holding my borders. <laughs> you dumb and fuck. Come up here for free stuff. Putin isn't shipping in uh, fentanyl to kill 100,000 people a year. Uh, I'm an American. The- I love America. Now, why don't you love Russia? Also, he doesn't know that none of the fentanyl in America came from Russia, right? Like, how does he? I don't know. Like, maybe there's Russian fentanyl. I don't fucking know. Like, are you a fentanyl expert? I'm not. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I don't. I don't do MDMA or cocaine at all anymore because of that shit. I'm terrified of that shit. You know what that would do to my ass, my old ass? I'd take some of that if I've had like seven cocktails before. It would be like it would be like the Dave funeral stream. Uh, it would stop you from having another bu- uh, another birthday. It's a birthday stopper. Right, right. You never get older. You know, he's not doing any of that. And it's all our hijacked, crazy, out-of-control government that's run out of people to start fights with. So now they're starting fights with the biggest nuclear power in the world. Somebody needs to take the keys away. Alex is like, everybody man. needs to so, calm the fuck down, is what he's saying, which I think is very funny. <laughs> So he's saying the country that was invaded started a fight with Russia because we made them. We, the globalists, the, like the fucking, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know who we are. You know what I mean? When we I say made Russia invade Ukraine, but listen, listen, it, it's the thing he's trying to explain here. They're both claiming basically that NATO inviting new countries in, and those countries not joining NATO um, uh, caused Russia to invade Ukraine. That's the the talking point. Okay. Maniacs. So, uh, speaking about, you know, how, how Americans are just, they're the most propagand, I say, Americans are the most propagandized people in the world, and they don't know it. Right. At least in the old Soviet Union, when somebody saw something on the news or read it in the paper, they knew it was probably propaganda. Uh, same thing in China. But, in America, but then how did that system work for that long, Jimmy? If nobody believed the shit that they were talking Jimmy, if what the that's not how it, what? Oh, everybody in Russia, they just knew the thing on the TV, the whole government, the whole thing. They knew it was a sham and they didn't really do anything about it. They were just like, whatever. <laughs> everybody knows. Like, like what? <laughs> you know you just you just live with it everyone knows it's fake you just whatever no of course people believed it right 
I would suggest to you that it, somewhere in the realm of 50% plus one of people believed 50% plus one of things they read in the newspaper. Like, Yeah. Dewey Nord's a fucking moron. America, people literally think that Lawrence O'Donnell and Jake Tapper and Laura Ingram are telling you the truth. It's just mind blowing to me. I go, I just went to telling a you what the producers barking into their ear most of the time. Actually, sir, that's how the TV works. Like, uh, <laughs> does, does he just mean in general? Yeah, like it's, a, or it's so like weird. a specific thing. Like yeah, I don't believe to... everything that they say, but I don't think they're constantly lying is that what he means i'm very confused about I that mean, statement. i'm telling you they're just telling you whatever's on the teleprompter they're you know what i'm saying they're generally not even speaking their own truth right sure yeah like they have writers and shit like the the, the the idea that these people just go out there and they're like oh today i'm gonna be a lying liar it's like this isn't really how this works there's ways in what which- i i don't i don't think that anyone believes a hundred percent of what they see on on some news network like even the fucking most diehard fox news fan doesn't believe a hundred percent of what they hear on fox news oh of course not you know what i mean like that's it's it's <clears throat> it's this they're doing they're they're doing this thing where they they're telling their audience that oh everybody everybody watching us is the smart ones we see through the bullshit but the other people they either don't see through the bullshit or they know it's bullshit, but they're just not agreeing with you for uh, reasons, right? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. And when when they say that, oh, these people don't believe the things that they're telling you believe, they're just trying to take away the agency of people that don't agree with them. Like, I yep. don't know for sure whether or not Jimmy Dore be- like believes this or whether it's audience capture or whatever, but I'll grant that he doesn't just not believe this and that he's like, you know what I'm saying is that then that he's wrong, right? I'll, if that's what someone's saying about him, I'm not going to like be like, oh, that guy doesn't believe anything. It's all a sham. It's all a conspiracy. Alex is uh, it's all a conspiracy. They don't, Alex doesn't believe any of this. Well, well, if you start just thinking that about anybody who doesn't agree with you, all you're doing is taking away agency from anybody who doesn't agree with you. You're like, oh, that's an automaton. Yep. And it's, it's <clears throat> again, a very IDW. Very IDW. Yep. Christmas parties. Yep. And it was like watching a, a wind-up cartoon doll of people just repeat propaganda back to me, whether it was about Fauci, whether... I, I was talking to a guy, he just got his booster last week. He's got his booster. Well, he has eight. He eight. has all eight. I, I'm guessing he does. Booster number five. Anybody who catches them all. Okay. Anyway, and <laughs> oh, so... Oh, shit. We got uh, goats, everybody. We got time noise. for tinfoil. We got time for tinfoil. Thank you for sending the goats here. Um, We're watching this. Welcome goats. That that's is and so just to, to speak to this, now people turn now I used to be a big fan of Bill Mars. And yeah, so Bill Maher recently That's everybody a lot of us, sir. This is this is one thing I feel like we can unite with the Jimmy Doors of the world about is that fuck Bill Maher. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, everyone hates Bill Maher. Except we'll 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 have different reasons, I think. So he said that now it's been clear to me since I started doing this show that Bill Maher is ignorant on purpose. I think Bill Maher even right? hates it, himself. I think that's why he's trying to drink himself to death on this on weird podcast that he has. Sir, sir, careful, careful. You might be, you might think you're shooting a Bill Maher, but you might be shooting a co-host here. Uh, because uh, <laughs> it's just so obvious. Again, if I have access to this information, a guy who works at HBO with a million dollar staff, he also has access to this information and he's either mind controlled. Or- he doesn't have an $8 million staff if his house looks like a really even uglier version of peewee's playhouse listen to what roseanne asked him this question this is very interesting no wonder i don't remember this no shit you blocked it out mk ultra uh, <laughs> <laughs> who's that bill maher doesn't know who am who's that he, and i don't think that's a joke i think he's <laughs> but that's because you can't tell because when bill maher tells a joke it's not funny and when bill maher doesn't tell a joke it's also not funny now so <laughs> So he just said something. Do you do you mean Martin Luther King Ultra? Is is that what he thinks? Oh, Jimmy Dore it's, also. It's you don't know if he's Can telling a joke right there either. Not to know what MK Ultra is, or do you think he really doesn't know, or do you think he's actually a victim of it? I I think Bill Maher is lying there. He also said he doesn't know who Klaus Schwab is. Oh, the cursor's back. Yes, here yeah. it was hiding under the tweet. <laughs> 
Mind Control program, you're under, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So who's but who's Klaus Schwab? Why did they record this in their bathroom? The w- e- like Bill Marshall doesn't sound great, but what's that? Sounds like swishy. This is uh, this is mind blowing to me. He doesn't know who the people are. He doesn't know what he MK. Yuval Harari on so the this, Igor of Klaus Schwab. So not long ago, Bill had on someone named Bella Thorne on his podcast, and she uh, was offended uh, because he mocked her pronouns. So who the fuck is Bella Thorne? She's a 26 year old actress who, unlike Klaus Schwab, the WEF, MK Ultra, that's someone who Bill actually has heard of. So he's heard of some no name actress nobody's ever heard of, but he's never heard of MK. Did you know that you've heard of your neighbor, but that you've never heard of the fucking governmental leader of fucking the French Guiana or whatever? Yeah, people Ultra have heard of different w- people, Jimmy. Or Klaus Schwab. He had her on his show. That's how he heard of her, Jimmy. You just told us. Oh God, it's been fucking two hours. We gotta we gotta take a break here so that I can cut the podcast part out. Um we're gonna leave this here. People can watch this, you can find it wherever. We're not gonna watch any more of this. Um This has been a, a bit of a really weird show, actually. So HK, you should read this show out. I don't know how you would do that, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this has been the Intellectual Dollar Tree, and we do this show live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash Uh If you are listening live, then after the next song we play, we're going to come back for, I guess, red light, but we've been in red light, so... A redder light. <laughs> yeah, we'll make the lights even redder. <laughs> Uh, so if you're listening on the podcast, come check us out live sometime. If you want to support us, you can do that on echoplex.com slash, no, hold on, patreon.com slash echoplex. Echoplexmedia.com. Yes, echoplexmedia.com, uh, patreon.com slash echoplex or eplex.store. Uh, this is Boomers by Periscope.
If you like what we're doing at Echoplex and aren't into Twitch, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Echoplex. For $5, you can get every show from beginning to end sent to you as an MP3, even the stuff we bleep out because it's too spicy for Twitch. Echoplex would not be where we are today if it wasn't for the community support we receive. Find out all the ways you can support the show at echoplexmedia.com slash support.